This is Rick Rose and Go on. Blue 17. Of course. And we're going to do a um, the top 10 of the 2000 episodes. And we have a lovely spread of lovely shows. And for a start, with the best of the best Avatar, The Last Airbender. And that was a classic. And The Legend of Aang, Aang in some regions. In the American anime TV series aired three seasons on Nickelodeon. The series began on February 2000 by including with two-hour episodes titled Sojourn's Comet and Avatar Last Zanger said in a realistic-like world where some people can manipulate classic elements. And we are heroes are Aang, yep. Toph, um, Sango. Now, you help with the rest, honey. I haven't watched the show in a while. Okay, there's, there's Aang, the main character, Bird, the last airbender, Katara, a waterbender, her and her brother, Sokka, Toth, a blind earthbender, and then there's Zuko, a, who came the in, prince of the fire name, and who's a firebender. Who came in the third season to help Aang teach him how to control fire. Yep. And he was accompanied by his uncle, who I was voiced by the actor who played too. I enjoyed the show because I loved Iroh. Iroh reminded me a lot of my grandfather because my grandfather was in the war as much as he was. Plus, he was Marco for Pete's sakes, the voice for many of our favorite characters like Aku or any others, even Master Splinter in one movie. But Zuko, Zuko's mother disappeared. And Zuko's sister and father are just screwed rules, if you know what I mean. And I love Katara, how she took it as a mother to Egg. But then later on in the series, they fell in love. One of my favorite episodes was when, um, well, the rock one. The one where they found that, um, rock bender. I mean, the earth bender. The kid. Oh. The blind earthbender. No, no, no. The first earth. No, no, no. The episode I'm talking about is when Kurtara helps the earthbenders leave the leave the boat. First seasons. First season. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Where the earthbenders look at before they learn how to melt them. Yep. That's the one I'm talking about. I mean, come on, seriously, it's an awesome thing. Very good episode. For the second season, it was. Aang was learning how to earth bend. No. No, it was when it was when at one point it was when at one point Aang, Katara, and um Zuko were actually oh, okay. Zuko was able to defend was able to save his grandfather from his sister. That's the first time they ever worked together as a team. But only just to save his uncle's grandfather. Or uncle. Uncle. Yeah, uncle. This is uncle. I don't know. The brother of Zuko's dad. I know. I know. I don't have to say about the show, but... Wow, I love the show. I mean, the powers, the ability for fire can be very dangerous. Water, soothing. Earth, wow. And air? Who would have thunk of that Avatar that a decade later on, the Avatar Inc. had more airbenders now. The Korra show mm. I'm talking about. But we'll talk about Korra in a different time. But yes... And also, the last, but the episode for the third season I love is when, uh, <laughs> Aang tried to enter the, uh, the school for, uh, for firebenders. That was a really good episode. Yes. You have to learn the elements in order of the seasons. Water is associated with winter, earth with spring, fire with summer, and air is associated with autumn, because... Because of the wind. That is true. And that's how I feel about the show. I love it because 
it inspired martial arts. And I was in the martial arts when I was in the 2000s. And it's basically what got me, and I loved it because of the elements. I've always been a fan of the elements of nature. Same here. Our next program is the Spectacular Spider-Man. Now this show was one of those TV shows that was just amazing. At first it was on Cage WB, but then it was changed to the DM, Disney DX. Unfortunately later on they deleted it, they um, canceled it for mm -hmm. um, proper reasons. But I love the show because it was much more better, but the only thing that was missing was the Kingpin. Because you know how I feel, I like the Kingpin, but at least they gave Venom more of a background story. They made uh, the episode where, where the Spider-Man was like, dealing with a lot of stress, spending her odd man, and being, dealing like being a hero and all that. You can continue, honey. Go on. Yeah, basically, this was the last Spider-Man show to be produced before Marvel was bought by Disney. And oh. So the reason I will, one of the reasons I like the show is because it's the first Spider-Man TV show that actually feature all the original members of the Sinister Six, Doctor Octopus, Electro, Vulture, Craven the Hunter, Sandman, and Mysterio in the same show, and have them as members of the team at one point. That's true. I love the episodes where Venom was trying to make um, Peter like really evil, but in the end. Uncle Ben helped them out. That was my favorite episode. Yeah, Plus, it's very... What, what yeah. we learned of Spider-Man's origin. That too. And, which took place after Spidey fought the Sinister Six. Mm -hmm. But in this series, instead of... Um, instead of... Um, <laughs> instead of Jay... Instead of uh, Peter being in love with Mary Jane... It was the other girl that was in the show. Gwen Stacy, daughter of the captain. An enemy to uh, <laughs> Spider-Man. Like any policeman who thinks he was a vigilante, just getting for fame. But here is some information. Here's some information about why the show was canceled. Just to give you all, just to get you all an idea. Greg. Greg rest and was hoping to read 65 episodes, but 26 episodes of Spectre Spider-Man were produced in total. The series stopped producing and renewed dependent upon ratings of Season 2 on the U.S. Disney X channel, the sales of the TV, and the third season was to have gone ahead of production. Greg stated that Carnage, Hobgoblin, Hydro-Man, and Scorpion would have made their appearance as well as planned to cast as Maria and Sally as Emily... Whoa, Emily Albon? The fa Osborne, the, the the mother of, of course, Peter's best friend. And September 1, 2009, the television rights for Spider Man was returned to Marvel by Sony. At this prime point, the president of Marvel animated Eric Roman further stated that no decision has been made either way, regarding the fate of the series. But News Summer reported that the series canceled occasion just after the Walt Disney Company acquired Marvel Entertainment of December 2009. On April 13, 2010, Marvel announced that the new series Lucy Bates on the Ultimate Spider-Man comic storyline would air on DX of 2011, which actually aired on April 1st of 2012, and the same day the new series was announced. Westman is told that I heard nothing directly from Marvel, but I think the Ultimate Spider-Man announcements make it very clear that Spect Spectacular is over. Marvel's animation Shoney and to Marvel Anime Age confirming that the series has ceased producing. Weisman would later write that in 2009, in exchange for consideration of the movie rights, Sony had liquidated to Marvel and licensed to produce television series that use Spider Man associated characters who retain mm -hmm. ownership of Spectral Spider series and all production elements create a speculative case in for it. Such as character design, storyline, therefore, neither Sony nor Marvel could continue producing the series. Each lack in some essence, right? So, so, and in the proximity, same time that Sony returned. Spider-Man television rights to Marvel. Marvel was acquired by Walt Disney Company. And that's a lot of mouthful. Yeah, that's basically what I said. This was the last Spider-Man TV series we produced. Or Marvel was bought by... It's just sad that they ended with a cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I would have loved to see more. Plus, I had a thought. What if the final boss was going to be the Kingpin? But no, they never went 
there. To tell you the truth, rumor has it that there was mention that the Kingpin was going to be in the third season as a rumor. It's been spread around. But that's only been a rumor. But it would have been interesting to see that happen to Volition. Plus, Carnage. Oh my god, Carnage and Venom would have been like, oh. Yes. Camus did make a cameo in the second appearance of the Sinister Six. And, and there's the Goblin. He was basically like yeah. the Joker in this show. <laughs> Don't mention that name. Joker, I hate clowns. <laughs> So I have a terrible fear of clowns. Don't ask. In addition, the series had the total eight, eight small story arcs, with each set of episodes being had something to do with the different class in school. The only thing I didn't like about the show was that, um, well, in the end, Peter lost his best friend and his job in working with the professor. And, well, he shouldn't have done that. But then you again, mean Dr. Connors? Yeah, yeah. And Eddie Brock and Lynn then became Venom. I mean, I didn't know that Eddie Brock was going to end up like a good friend and BAM! Evil. Yeah, in this version, Eddie Brock was a childhood friend of Eddie, of Peter's. Yeah, true. And because I... the dads were partners and their moms were best friends. True. And, as for Stacey, I kind of like seeing her more <laughs> in the show. Compared to the 90s Spider-Man show we were talking about last week, I like the Stacey in this one. Because this one is much more better. Plus, Stacey Quinn is more intelligent. Plus, the Boldies, later on in the show, actually started being friends with Peter Parker because I'm worried about, about his Aunt May and everything. So, yeah. Hmm. The Boldies actually decided to become friends with Peter. And uh, also had friendship with Flash Thompson in kindergarten. And then later saying that yeah. given the explanation as to why he was was given the name. It wasn't because he was fast. And Flash said he was three years old or something. <laughs> That's my day. Go smart as a whip. Alright. Our next show is He-Man, the Master Universe 2002. I love this one better because I grew up with it. Because A- I love Adam Slug's attitude, although when he transformed into a superhero, old-fashioned way, though, and Man Knight, which is one of my favorite characters, plus he reminds me of my Man dad. Man at Arms, you mean? Man at Arms, yes. Thank you, honey. Man at Arms reminds me a lot of my father, and I kind of take a lot of resemblance to his daughter. Plus, I would always uh, not listen to my dad's rules. But also, it was later I'll find out that the one who gave Adam the, the sword was the mother to... Well, Hila. Hila, yes, thank you. Hila. This was shown in an episode of season of the original show, but Tila's memory of that encounter or was erased, and Tila never found out. Yes, I know. Yes. I wish they did this, let that happen. This was the show that got me into the He Man franchise when I watched it on Tsunami on Cartoon Network. This one is a lot more better. Better animation. Plus, we find out how Skull Man lost his face because it was due to some poison venom that poisoned his face and gave him a magic skull for a head. Yes. He grew some kind of acid like substance toward And also, the villains in his group were, well, kind of. But. The only, but the only evil villain that I liked a lot was Evil Lynn. Even in one, even at one point in the series, Evil Lynn's father even appeared in the show, which does got a lot of moxie into it. And the Yep, the meaner one. And Orko's, Orko was like, oh god, give me a break. He was a little lame. I mean, in the original, he was lame, but in this one, at least he was a bit more smart, and sometimes at least. And then there was. And who's we talking about? Orko, the flying, oh, yeah. the flying wizard creature. That's a yes, friend but, to Adam. At least this also explains how Orko learned, uh, you know, being the same person. Also, at one point. One of the at one point one of the characters in our in our group of heroes was once turned evil once. 
That episode was really good. Really good. Also... Uh, which, uh, which character was that? It's hard to remember, but believe me, I know That's one of them. One where many faces was being controlled by Beastman? Yes! Or many faces had once face on? Yes. Yes. That's also the one that, in, that gave us the origin of the character Too Bad. That's the Too Bad character. Oh, two different heads and skin. Yep. The show is really good. Uh, but to tell you the truth, they were plans to they were planning to do a comic book series. He Man was gonna be created to a comic book. And they also planned to have Horda from the Shira series as the main antagonist for the next season. Unfortunately though, it never came to pass. As for the comic, I'm not sure, but here's the information to the comic book. To conceal the release of the series, He-Man comic was created by MV Creation. Three separate series were released for between 2002 and 2004. Two miniseries, a short live outgoing series, a handful of one-shots with problems, but some of these were collected into trade paper, paperback gothic novels, I mean graphic. The tone and material of the comic was slightly different from the cartoon, and the writers hoped to apply to old demographic persuasion to the comics. The comic ultimately came to a close when Matter began to end the license the program for Master Universe relaunch. The comic were published by Image Comics and MV Creations themselves through Congo Comics. Before really going back to Image Comics, MV Creations also made several mini comics, which included a few of the 2000X action figures and also created a comic that unproduced episode 40 of the cartoon series based on the Dean Stanford original Steam play and the comics captured. Skeletor we take Snake Mountain, King has recovered from his injury, defeating him as Zorkots, and animal and, and man in arms is transformed back into a snake man. Yeah. Really? Wow. Wow, that's a lot of information. Yeah. And also like the New Adventures of He-Man series that came out back in the night. Yeah, well we're not talking about that, we're talking about 2000. I think I'm gonna like the New Adventures of He-Man. Man, they gave Adam and he made two different appearances to further tell them apart. Because as you were going to the original show, it's kind of easy to tell that Adam and he made are the same person. Because they have the same thing. Kind of like Superman and Clark Kent. Yes, but this, they basically gave Adam a different appearance to he man And of course, he man was voiced by Ken Clark. She was a quick actor for Leonardo from Turtles. And in any case, our next program is Team Titans, not the new one. And not the 2018 either. The original, the original one, 2003. You know who to call. Team Titans! In any case, this is basically the better series, way better. Team Titans is centered around five main members to be a team. Robin. Intelligent, capable leader of Team Titans, Starfile, a quark and curious alien prisoner of Planet Tamarin, Cyborg, a half human, half robot who knows his strength, technology, powers, Raven, a stoic girl from a parallel world of Sadaret, drew upon dark energy and present powers, and Beast Boy, a ditzy, good natured Joker who can transform into various animals and days. In the situation, Teen Titans, a large T shaped striker featured live quarters as the common center of value training and faculties. You may go on, honey. Basically, this is basically with Teen Titans. The only character I was familiar with was Robin, because I won Batman animated series and the Tim Burton Batman movies. That is also true for me as well. The first time I ever saw Robin was from Batman animated series and then the Batman movies. So, but then once I saw these other characters, I started to like each of one of them. Raven, personally, because yep. Raven, well. Raven and I had something in common, either dealing with anger and stress for family and everything, and I named her after my doll, Raven, and the purple hair. That's why I got the purple hair for Raven, because of, well, Raven, from Team Titans. Yeah, this, yep, this is basically what got me into the rest of the group, Cyborg, Beast Boy, Raven, and Starfire. Beast Boy was a vegetarian, yet a bit more smarter in this version compared to the <sighs> Team Titans Go. Way much smarter, and plus we just saw a bit more development for him when he had his chance to tell his story. And Robin with Slade? Oh my god, the episodes were amazing. Slade was trying to make Robin evil, trying to make him his apprentice and make him like a son. It's like, oh god. And, 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 and the same thing almost happened with, with, 
with that guy with the school with Cyborg. He tried to make Cyborg to join his side. Blood of blood. Yes, blood of blood. And it was the same thing for Raven. <laughs> her father tried to force her to do evil. And, and as for Starfire, well, her sister tried to get her to do the right thing to marry a slimy creature. Yeah. They have done a yes, lot of amazing um, things. Blackfire is a you're in a position. There's a leader. The monster is named Glurdo Skletz. <laughs> it's amazing I can say that name, uh, face face. And we ended up getting more heroes. But most of the heroes turn good. Well, one B hero. Anyway, get it. B hero? <laughs> well, if you know what I mean. Not Transformers. The DC character with the power to shrink. Exactly. Not the 50s version of the Wasp. Only a girl, which is good. The wasp is a girl. I know, I know. So yeah, other the fact the show did feature versions of four of the original Teen Titans members from the comics. Aquaman, Aquaman Psychic, Speedy, the Psychic, Pick of Green Arrow, and, of course, Kid Flash, the nephew of the Flash, the very own Flash, mind you. No, that's the first time I ever heard of him. Yep. In a strange thing, in a strange type of fact, it was going to be a Teen Titans group in the Justice League animated series, the pilot. Okay. But, luckily, years later on, that was turned into its own series. Which, I'll talk mm -hmm. about that at a different time when we talk about Justice League one of these days. In any case, the reason why it was cancelled is, well, yes, I know, Jacob, but I like reading for every reason. For every reason, every reason, in the mid-November of 2005, TeenTitans.com reported that the protectant of the sixth season was looking extremely unlikely. The fans were urged to explain their support for the show. Cartoon Network several days after the posting, one came and Cartoon Network had officially tampered with this terminated. So, according to Will Wilson, the actor who proved the voice Aqua Lad series was terminated by new Warner Brothers featured anime exclusive who made decision not to renew the series based on 16's pits. Whether the story was contracted by the series and edited, Rob Harrison stated that the decision came from Cartoon Network, not to WB, and that the crew was informed during the writing phase for season 5 that there were no plans for 6 season, which sucked. And the show producer David Slags and Danny was given a different reason for the show cut, like either the ratings dropped. Or after scary season four, managed wanted the show dead because Ben had had the show toy dealers. Ugh, money makes people crazy. Cartoon Network announced that Madness has become its master toy license in 2006. After last episode, Warner Bros. announced that the feature film Teen Titans Teen Little to Trouble in Tokyo, the film produced in San Diego, Comic Con International, was shown on Cartoon Network first. On September 15, 2006, aired to Kids WB. September 16, 2006, and finally released on DVD on February 6, 2007. But we knew, everybody, we're getting back. Teen Titans is coming back. We saw it happen at the end of Teen Titans Go movie. Ugh. We saw them coming back. I had a feeling that, that creature took them somewhere. I believe an ancient group of villains. Wanted Teen Titans to get out of existence, but that's why they send that creature to steal them, probably, or trap them somewhere in a dimension. That's what I think. Anyway, your thoughts, honey? Mm, I'm not sure, but if they did do a sixth season, they would have had a focus on Starfire. Oh, you remember yeah. who didn't get a season devoted to her? That's true. They did Robin, oh, Cyborg, also, Beast Boy, Raven. She also served as the on-screen debut of Terra. Tara got a few episodes of herself, too, but... Yeah, she was basically the main focus of the second season. I still can't believe, though. Slade is still alive! Oh, my God! In the last episode, oh, we saw a robot. Oh, back by Raven's dad, Trigon. Although we never got to see what he actually looks like under the mask. We did, when he was helping Robin, remember? The skeleton? Yes, but, I mean, other than that... You know, yeah. where he had flat on and all that. No, oh, well, his name is Wilson anyway. Known to be a nasty villain and the other Batmans, as you know. In and case, also, in the comics, Blade is better known as Deathstroke. Ooh. Although, due to the show being child-friendly, they simply went by his first name. Blade. Yes, I know. In any case, that's our thoughts on the show. Next one is... 
back to the pet bun, da 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 And that is Samurai mm -hmm. Jack. The show, a boy who was raised to fight a monster for thousands of years and is still doing it today, after the seventh season, of course. I'll talk about that later. In any case, Fifth season three? Yes. You see, Jack was a hero, and even though we didn't know his real name, we never know his real name, but they just saved with Jack. So yeah, he fought, he battled, he had a man of honor, he had honor and everything. He was a young prince for Pete's sakes. And as for Aku, oh, he was voice of Marco, the greatest voice for any Chinese man. He was amazing. This villainy was just... And here is the premise. Long ago in this distant land, I, Aku, the shapeshifting master of darkness, unleashed an unspeakable evil, but the foolish Shamar Moor wielded a magical step forth to oppose me before the final blow was struck. I tore off and apart of flung him in time and lung him to the future where my evil is lost. Now the fool seeks to return to the past and undo the future that is Aku. I heard you giggling, honey. Did I make you laugh? And do myself giggle. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you like that. So yes, that's the premise for our story. And Jack <laughs> is one of my favorite programs. Basically, it's the story of a samurai who was trying to save his own country. And oh, look. Oh, and ended up getting sent into the future where he rules. That's true. And so, since then, the show follows Jack's adventures, trying to return to his own and undo what Akua did to the world. That's true. The basic. He made friends and allies that of the people true. who under his rule, yes. but also avoiding robots and bounty hunters. Yes. Who said that to him? The basic premise of, team of Samurai Jack came from Takayaki's childhood, I mean, general Taki, I mean, you know what I mean. Childhood fantasies with samurai culture and Bushido code, as well as recurring dream that he wanted poster Apogada Future Samurai World Travel the World Fight and Mutants with his crush. Which was really funny, which gave him the idea to do Samurai Jack. And also, there's yeah. other things inspired him, like Ben Hurd, Loyal and Arabian, Spectacular Dad inspired him, and Frank Miller comic book series on Ronin. Which I've watched the anime, which is really good. Which he was inspired by a lot of things. So basically, with all those shows, inspired him to make Jack. And Jack was born. I love yeah. the show. Also, um, due to the fact that when I was in love with Samurai Jack, so I studied Bushido techniques, Kung Fu. I'm a black belt in my family, so I know how to use sword techniques and other techniques. But I only use them when I have to deal with nasty guys. Go on, Jago. Yeah. Another interesting fact, Samurai Jack is named by the people who created Dexter's Land and the Powerpuff Girls in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But seriously, what is his name? What is his real name? I would love to know that if it was true. However, yeah. it would never be. Like, maybe it was like Takahika Haka, maybe. Or something. Yeah. In addition, in season 3, gave us the origin of Aku. Showing how it came to be, and how Jack's father were taking the very sword that can harm him. That is true. Another truth. In fact, that's why he okay, was constantly sending all these robots and bounty hunters after Jack, because as the sword Jack wields is the only thing that can hurt a coup. That is true. Luckily, there was a conclusion to the show. However, I did not care for the ending. The ending was... BOO! It was bad! I hated the yeah. ending. I hated it. It was... Well, Jack finally returned. So yeah, after about a tick and a hiatus, except the finishing season 4, 2017, I believe, brought in the fifth and final season. Introduce us to Ashi and her sister, and learn uh, one thing about Jack: why he doesn't kill organic beings. I mean, goes all out against robots. That's true. Also, I really didn't care much for the the 2017 revelation. I didn't really care for it. It was not good. 
the episodes were a few of them were good, but some of them were just just it just went too long for me. It just went way too far with me. It was like, oh my god. The only episode I liked was when Ossie was mean, all of Jack's former allies and friends. And that was the episode I liked. And as for the for the for the gross scenery and everything, oh my god, it was too much for my little brain. Way too much. And also, the end of was just I love the fact that at least they mentioned a ladybug and my favorite. Plus ladybug and my favorite book. But I would have liked it if that if Ashi was brought back to life by the gods. Because someone actually um, animated a scene where Jack is all alone and that he misses Ashi, but then the gods are like giving him a reward to bring Ashi back to life. I would have loved that happening, but no, no, it didn't go that way. I hated it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. That's my honest opinion. I hated the series. The new one, it was. Oh, and oh my god, those poor girls, they were treated badly by their mother! So, so, Ashi's sisters were raised in the same way like Jack was. However, Jack was raised to love and be kind of one. Those, those girls were raised to kill! That's so live. Yeah. And Ashi became quite the fan favorite. Exactly. Plus, for, enough, for uh, <clears throat> the reasons of, like, her body and everything, that's another reason why. I don't know why men do yeah. that. <clears throat> In any case, that's all my thoughts on the Samurai Jack show. The next show we'll talk about X Men Evolution, which is one of my favorite programs that I grew up with for other reasons. Yes. This, and, along with the X Men movies, is what got me into the X Men part of the Marvel Universe. Same here. This was the first X Men show I loved. Plus, well, this is another reason why I love the TV show. Do you know why I gave Raven the blue skin? Because it's based on one of my favorite blue characters. No, not Beast, but yeah, Beast is one of my favorite characters. It's Kurt. You see, the blue. Yeah. Okay. Let me. Kurt. Let me say it. Let me say it, honey. You're ruining it. The reason why is Kurt was one of my favorite characters. So it's true. I love Beast, and Mystique was my favorite villain. But Kurt was one of my favorite blue skin people. I was inspired to make Raven blue skin. So blue skin from Kurt, purple hair from Raven. And Pikachu, I'm um, Pikachu cheeks from Pikachu. If you were wondering about the red cheeks she always has, so yeah, that's where I got the inspiration for Raven skin. Blue skin is awesome, and yes, I love the show and had very wonderful things about it. I love Jean and Scott, and of course, my favorite one of them all, Rogue. As I said in the last that we did on it, Rogue is my favorite, but Rogue is more better, more has a bit more gothic into her appearance. And in the second season, she didn't know that her mother was disguised as her best friend, so she can be around her. Which other reasons? Well, all that. And Rogue was actually adopted by Misty. True, true. We never know about her true parents. I wish we did. But yes, the show was much more better opening with the future for youngins. Professor X yep. was definitely one of my favorite. Professor X's Cyclops, yep. Wolverine, Storm, Jean Grey. They were all awesome. And Nightcrawler. And of course, Shadowcat. Who had a lot of love for the bad boy Lance, which I pretty much love because, well, I had a lot of a bad boy at one point when I was in high school, so I can understand it. But also the thing was, the thing that really got me a little upset about was Magneto not being so loving father to his daughter, Wanda, a witch. It would have been awful if they just... You can't do that to your daughter, Magneto, seriously. And boom, boom! Oh my god, she was like, boom, boom! But really had a bad father who used her for evil. That's just, that's just twisted. That's just bad. Bad, bad blood. Bad blood, indeed. Mm. Your thoughts, honey? Well, like I said, this is one of the things that come into the X-Men franchise. I basically love the characters because of their abilities and appearances. Yes. And of course, the cast. The cast were all amazing. And even though, I didn't know Storm had a nephew, but then again, he was mentioned in the uh, X-Men series. However, this new X-Men, this new boy that's nephew to uh, the Storm had spikes all over his body. Evan was created for the show. Yes, that's true. The first time the series was actually a boy who was like a son. Thunderstorm. In any case, 
They were final moments for the episode that I really like. The series is ended with a speech by Charles Gabriel, who has caught a glimpse of the future of being controlled by Obelisk, which I hate. The future center is foreseen. Apocalypse, thank you, love. Continue with an anti mutant segment. A reformed Magneto teaches that the new mutants include and return Jubilee and Wolfbane. Jean Emily being taken over by the old power dog Phoenix with her come in the X-Men's most terrible enemy has series continue to show next season with a focus on Dark Phoenix Saga. The future X-Men team considered of Cyborg, mm, Cyclops, um, Nightcrawler, mm, X-33, who's technically the daughter of Wolverine, Iceman, Beast, Shadowcat, Colossus, Rogue, which Colossus is my boyfriend's favorite hero. I mean, oh, character. Well, my characters of the X-Men, actually. Good. Ability not to wear gloves, thank God, I mean, they control power and storm. The uniforms they see in the future more much like the dark uniforms from the Ultimate X-Men series in the comics. As well, there's a live-action feature film about and the Brotherhood includes Scarlet Witch and Piero. Piero. Pietro. Piero. Yeah, Quicksilver, stand in front of S.H.I.E.L.D., thank you. And foreshadowed Freedom Force and the fleet of Sentinels led by Nimrod. The last scene from the X-Men, New Mutant, Gambit, Koshor, I mean, Colossus. Thank you, honey. Boom Boom, Havoc, Angel, and X-23, and Return Spike. Well, but also, here is another Flash news. There was originally going to be a fifth season. Had the show continued up to part episode season four, Ashlands, this 13 more episodes would have been produced. It would have likely focused on the content for stress to between mutant kind continue to receive from normal people since being discovered in season two, it would have had been adapted its own version of the Dark Phoenix saga. Which they're actually planning to do a movie based on that actually. Jean taken over mm -hmm. by the all powerful Phoenix within her, or seen by Professor X and the X Men attempt to save her from the universe entirely with controlling her. And believe me, it would have been good. Mm -hmm. And it would have introduced Mr. Sinister. Oh, oh God. What a freak. <sighs> no, he's a monster. I'd rather do with Beast. I'd rather be with... I'd rather... Also, at one point in the um, music department for the X-Men Revolution, this is just a little trivia, there were a few songs that did, and I had a few of these songs on my disc called... Only a Girl, which is a good song called Walk on the Wild Side, Toad, Toad's theme, Toad and the Witch and the War Dog episode, Who Am I Now, a Rogue theme, Wolverine's theme, Evolution theme, the theme song. These themes would have been on the score and composed by William Kevin Anderson. Several of the, episodes, several of the songs were really lovely, but my favorite one is Walk on the Wild Side. Girls become a gang of vigilantes. Oh yes, that was my favorite one. Plus, in the end, um, Kurt's mother kind of helped uh, help the girls out of the situation. That was the only thing she ever did that was good. Besides keeping on Rogue and keeping her safe. I mean, come on, she mm -hmm. is technically Rogue. Rogue's adopted mother. That means Kurt's um, sister also. They are sisters and brothers. Yeah. Although they don't reveal who Kurt's dad is. It on the comics. It was actually he's some kind of demon. Kurt, wow. Mm. Anything? Yes. Yes. Anyway, our next program is my favorite Teenage Ninja, Ninja Turtles. This show got <laughs> this show got me into it. The 2003 series is much better than the original. Sorry, hun, but I love the 2003 one. 2003 is awesome. Plus, it's more darker characters, more designs on sweater, more on Karai, more dark stuff, and they had the most darkest episodes in the whole season. The darkest season was my favorite. And you know, that one was very dark and evil and zombies and all that. And plus, mm -hmm. plus Mr. Stockman was a zombie in an episode that was <laughs> banned from some country because due to the fact of, oh, it's nasty. Also, we started with the um, sewers with their master splinter training and all that. And then the mouse monsters and everything, and then everything started changing. Leo, Michelangelo, Raphael. And of course, Donatello. Donatello. Yes, Donatello. I can always forget his name. Thank you, love. And also, I love the fact that the April O'Neil is better than this. So plus, she's in the antiques, and I grew up with antiques because my mom would take me to antique shops. And basically, yeah. basically, the 2003 series followed the story set by the comic, which is much more better. Way much this, better. The turtles also went by their nickname. 
Leo, Donnie, Raph, and Mikey were much more easier for my head. I would watch this episode every single Fox Kids every morning. As soon as I, was, as soon as I got up, brush my teeth, eat breakfast, and I would go watch the show. I adored it because it got me into more martial arts. As I've said in our review, most of the shows that were around martial arts inspired me to fight. So basically, I kept training myself in martial arts. So I know a lot of martial arts, but I can only teach it now because I can't use it to fight for my life now. I can only use it to teach because I'd rather teach than use it. As I say, you can only defend yourself if you if you if you use defensive moves. In any case, my favorite characters in the show were, of course, the brothers, and also April and her boyfriend, who I forgot his name. What's his name again? Casey Jones. Oh yes, Casey Jones, who hated that big idiot of a moron from ruining his father's shop. And then. Mm -hmm. He was one nasty guy, and plus, oh, sh sweater. What a nasty creep. His own um, Oroku Saki. Yes. The first one was actually named Utron, one of the aliens from the comics. And? You act Oroku Saki was made into a demon. Yes, I know. That one scared 11 hectares out of me. And to that, when they, when they showed that episode John there, I was like, I was like, oh my god, they made lost episodes that were all oh, dark and scary. But more to the point, we actually got to see more of, we saw Leatherhead's intelligence side, who was one of my favorite creatures. And of course, Karai, we found out how she was, and she was a adopted daughter to the little alien. And there's so many stories, so many. It's like amazing. The episodes were just... It just came and came and came, kept going, kept going, kept going for so long. Most of the episodes were very fascinating, but yeah, most of the episodes had a lot of lessons, too. Especially the Christmas episode, which was kind of adorable. But the, sad, yeah. but the saddest episode, I thought, was when that tiny little robot kid tried to make himself have a family. Which was kind of dark. Nanobot. Yeah, when I was watching the first season. It was kind of scary. But hey... Hmm. When you watch, when you watch the new, when you watch the one that was the lost one, <laughs> that's nothing compared to what I just said. But yeah, mm. that series was kind of really scary. It's called the Night Tribute. The fifth season focus on New Threat proceeding. Another version of Swear said to be the original legendary villain of Kusaki. The turtles were asked by Ninja Tribution, a group of warriors who seek to come back the ancient Tango Shredder, to train alongside several human warriors to become strong enough to battle, involving turtles getting new weapons, learning these powers. However, they never used these powers in the newest series. I wish they did. But yeah, this these episodes were the darkest episodes I've ever seen, due to the fact that these episodes were created, but however, were created way to scare the audience. Some of these episodes were removed due to the fact that they were censored. And one of the episodes that was censored, and that's why it was known called the Ninja Turtles, Ninja, Ninja Turtles, The Lost Episodes. And believe me, the bad episode that was never played was Nightmare Recycled. It was deemed too confusing, too violent for children program. Han and the Garbage Men were conjoined twins, and they were surgically separate at birth by back alley surgeon, and the Garbage Men being discarded as mm. garbage. Since there was no chance of it aired himself. Ew! What? They were twins? Holy yeah. smokes! No wonder they look so much alike. Ew! And I thought the one about Master Stockman was turned to a zombie was gross. Hmm. And yet, he is alive still! How did the guy survive? I'll never know. He even survived it, in the fast part. He was taken he was put into a robotic one. That's how. Yeah, I know. Then he peers up again. If you know what I mean, in the fat and the uh, fast forward, unfortunately, yeah, the, fast they travel forward in time. Meet the great, 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 the descendant of Casey April Jones. And in April, yes. And fast forward was just joining them on their adventures. Hmm. Fast forward <laughs> wasn't really my favorite cup of tea. Then back to shoes was really good, except the robot ball them really. I swear that robot is just a. Uh, ugh. The machinery and the Joker. Well, yeah. so the last thing they ever created was Turtles Forever, a TV movie. And well, I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, didn't like the turtles in it. 
Don't boo at me. Why did Claude Carey betray the 80s versions of the characters? Honey, I was doing a joke. Would you let me do it? Now, Sorry. don't now don't boo at me for saying this, but I didn't like the turtles in it. The only turtles I like were the 2003 ones and the ones that were first created. They're happy. If you want to be criticizing me, go ahead. But I hate them. I still hate the turtles from the old series. Go ahead and boo at me. I had to do that, honey. It's part of the li it's part of the things I usually do. In any case, next show to talk about is Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is my favorite. Yu-Gi-Oh is a show about a boy with a mystical puzzle that that he once that he once solved and awakened an ancient power that made him so powerful in card gaming. He ended up being targeted by so many crazy people, like Kaiba, Pegasus, anyone. And he had a lot of friends. Taya, Joey, you can name the rest, honey. There's Tristan, and of course Yugi's grandfather, mm -hmm. the one who gave him the Millennium Puzzle. It's true, it's, it's all we never know and see his parents. Then again, his mother is somewhat mentioned in the um, the pilot series of Yu-Gi-Oh! Although it was only in Japan, never posted into English. In fact, in the original Japanese version, hmm, Yugi's mom did appear in some scene. Yeah, I did say that. I just said that now. <laughs> but for some reason, she was cut out. I don't know why, and I wonder who and was. I think Oh, go According ahead. to the manga associated with the anime, Yugi's dad was always away on business trips. Uh, that's true. And he was always around his grandfather, so his grandfather was the one he was raised. Yeah. But yeah, the episodes were... Oh, go ahead. Basically, Yugi's grandfather owned a card shop. Mm, yes. Things got a lot wild. After he battled against yeah. Sokaiba... And dual and dual monsters, Yugi proceeded by Maximilian Pegasus, the creator of dual monsters. He used the power of Millennium item, just like the Millen just like the Millennium puzzle. The Millennium Eye trapped the soul, not just ground, not just his grandfather, but Seto and his brother Mokuba, who were yep. who were forced into this whole battle. And yeah, Kaiba doesn't like magic, but yet ironically, in the Yugi movie, he started to believe in magic now. And also, <laughs> he went to battle the, um, the, the, um, the pharaoh himself in the movie. Although, <laughs> at the end, it was, it was seen that way, though. Yeah. I love that movie. I love it. It was awesome. And my, yeah. fav my favorite character was Taya and Yugi. I always saw those two as a cute couple. And Joey and, his, Joey and his little sister. They remind me a lot of me and my sister. Because my sister would always look out for me if I was sick or something. I love Serenity. She was adorable. She was there to, she was there to stop Joey from killing Yugi. When he was possessed by that... Uh, when he was being ugh. controlled by Merrick. Oh, yes. That was scary because... If I had to see my sibling do something bad, it would scare me to shingles. <laughs> Basically, with the villains of the series, they didn't stay bad for long. No. Pegasus, the, his motivation was trying to bring back his wife. Yeah, but unfortunately, he Mara? lost that. It was because of a darkness that awoke inside him after he underwent this ritual to get the tattoo on his back. And as for the other villains, I didn't care for it because... At this point, when the Yugo series was kept, it kept going on and on and on and on and on. It kept going on for so long. And then finally, yeah. the show ended. Yep. Which was really good. It was actually based on a, man on a manga by the show Jim Company. The only thing well, is basically, it focuses on the dual monster part of the manga, leaving out the, part that, leaving out the parts that came before. That's true, love. That's true. In any case, the only thing that was sad that poor Noah lost his life. But you know, I guess get me thinking. What if Noah was able to switch himself to a machine that was near Kaiba? And what if he got himself out of the island? Could be possible. I've always thought that. Yes, he could have. It is possible. Many people thought the same thing like I did. Although, once. with the English version of with the English dub, they usually. Didn't mention death a lot. Nope. Just sleep. In any case, our next program is Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which is which I really, Just really love because due to the fact of A Judy I mean Jaden. Thank you, honey. 
Jaden had a lot of power. He was able to awaken doom monsters. And all because this was taking place 10 years after the event of the original series. Followed a new generation of duelists, including a young boy named, named well, Jaden Yugi, who attended the Duel Academy. In a school founded by Seto Kaiba and trained duelists in field. Jaden, I'm always having problems saying his name. Jaden makes various friends and rivals, takes many challenges, but also got a Winky Kiki Karibo gifted him by Yugi Moto himself, which he wasn't aware at the time of the first episode, of course. And of course. Actually, he knew it was Yugi, but when Yugi appeared in the first episode, you didn't get to see his eyes. He yeah. just many from the nose down. Only in his voice. I could hear his voice, definitely. And yes, I love the series. The series was amazing. And plus, we had the same, but there was the same plot with the, like, the little brother wanting to be like his big brother and all, and Jaden was really friends, and then there was the rival, then there was the girl who wanted to, well, Alex. I really like Alex. You remember Alexa. Alexis. You mean Alexis? Yes, Alexis. And plus, she lost her brother, and he, and he, and he, and he got free thinking, thanks to Jaden. And of course, their professor. Their professor was like, oh my god, where to begin? He was trying to do something. He's like trying to stay alive due to being cursed by the sacred beasts. Yes. Basically, evil versions of the Egyptian god monsters from the first show. Indeed. Indeed, indeed, those creatures. But yes. Before, even though GX went for four seasons, the fourth season wasn't dubbed into English. Oh uh, yes, I was getting to that. The fourth season. Unfortunately, I had to watch it in subs to watch to get the rest of the story. If you watched it, you would have definitely gone scared. And then in the end of the series, you would have seen where they've all done their dreams. And all I can say is, in the last episode of the fourth season, you would see Jaden on the road traveling. With, of course, the cat that belonged to his professor and, and of course, his, and his professor's soul and, of course, so many other spirits. You would have seen, um, the... Jaden, go back in time, the door Yugi. No! Honey! I'm talking about the Darkness Saga. Season 4. Oh, yeah. You would see... With my crowd. Mm. Who appeared as a once-off villain in the first two seasons. Yes, Mirabelle. She was appeared as his helper in the show. You would have seen them dueling together, working together like a team. Honey, when I ask you to let me, please, because you haven't watched Sorry. it. I saw the darkness stage. You didn't watch it. Sorry, honey. But so, I have heard about it. Yes, but I've watched it, and I didn't. So I know the episodes. Mm -mm. The fourth season was awesome. If you guys watch the sub-series, go ahead and check it out for yourself. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but all I'm going to say is, it was awesome! And Jane was much more boom, 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 boom. Plus, it was more fighting, more balance, more fighting, more everything. Sorry, Jago, but I have to say it because, well, I've seen the show and you haven't. In any case... Well, there's four season anyway. I know. My favorite character was... watching the third season. I know. I know, honey. My favorite character. So, go on, honey. Go on. It's mainly the Duel Monsters themselves that got me into the franchise. Like Dark Magician, Blue Eyes White Dragon, Red Eyes Black Dragon, Heart Beatles. They're among my favorite. So when it comes to GX, the Elemental Hero, and let's hmm, the Egg XYZ Dragon. And team and Alexis is a cyber or blade. Her among my favorites from GX. My favorite characters were Jaden, Alexis, and um that little boy with the blue hair. Oh, man, I can Cyrus. Cyrus, you mean yes. Cyrus. Yes, Cyrus. Thank you, honey. Those three were like amazing. My favorite other character was the one with the with the with the face of a panda. Oh my god, his episode was uh, funny. Jimmy? actually, his face was more like a koala. I don't know what. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Koala, koala. Thank you, honey. Sorry, sorry, but thank you, honey. Yes, he did. His face did look like a koala. He did Australian based things, which is really cool, actually. And he later became yeah. he later became a uh, famous artist, I do believe. He ended up. He ended up getting the job with Pegasus. Which is pretty awesome. And then, next show we talk about is my favorite one series that got me Transformers on. 
Transformers Amada, which was my favorite show due to the factors. A. The story about the kids being involved with the Transformers. B. Starscream story. Starscream and Lexus being good friends. Three. Um, sideways being totally nasty and evil and was a puppet to Unicron. But luckily the kids beat him. The kids beat him Unicron with Optimus and Megatron. The on the planet, Galvatron well, yes, Galvatron. Same thing. On the planet Cybertron, war raged between the two factors known as Autobots and Decepticons. On the race of smaller power enhanced transport called the Minicons, seeking to flee conflicts that surround them. The Minicons escaped Cybertron in the aid of Autobots but attacked by Decepticons. And they were all flowed all over the solar system, and some of them got to Earth, which means the kids came in Alexis, Rad, and Carlos. Which the three had a purpose in life to help them out because the Minicons knew that they needed them on help. There were so many times when the kids did a lot of good things to help them out. Even when even when the Minicons didn't want to go on the ship, they actually went set on the ship and they didn't want they didn't want to go to space. They wanted the kids to come with them because the kids were needed. And the dream episode was really, really well confusing for me when I lost when I watched the last episode, it was confusing. Very confusing indeed. And this and Beast Wars is what got me into the Transformers franchise. At the watching, you probably noticed that there are quite a few animation errors as part of the episodes here and there. That's true, that's true. And the reason why I brought up Starscream is because, well, Starscream was always a man of honor. He was kind of like, well, Dinobot from the Beast Wars. And that got me yeah, really interested. Also, he would have a bond with Alexis. Alexis was one of the only humans in the, in the group of kids that would hang out with him a lot. And he was shown to be a good person until he was turned by Thrust, who I hate, a dumb, stupid trash box. And, and yet, Starscream was able to redeem himself. Indeed. By stopping the battle between Galvatron and Optimus. And stopped him from her, and stopping the Unicron from destroying Galvatron. He gave himself up. And after, and after Galvatron seeing that, he decided to work with Autobots to get rid of Unicron because he wanted to honor his second-in-command who saved his life. Which was actually a demon. It was actually, else, it was a beautiful... Plan, oh, sorry. He just power for himself. I know, but in some aspects, I believe he did it in his honor because he knew that Gal he knew that Starscream saved him. So in some aspects, I would say half and half, I would say. Half the power and half for doing what was right because he knew Starscream, want, you know, and all that. Plus, besides, who wouldn't want, who who doesn't want Unicorn to rule over the universe? No one does. Yeah. And, uh, and as for Star, and as for Sideways, the episode that got me really stumped about him was when he got the kids into the computer world. Who? <sighs> At first, Sideways yeah. kind of Sideways was an awesome character, but then, bam, he turned evil. Like that. Basically, sideways is what you call a uh, wolf in sheep's clothing. Bah, <laughs> oh, exactly. In fact, his ability to change factions was inspired by a G1 character called Punch and Counterpunch. Ah, yes. That character. I Basically, know. with Punch, he's an Autobot to add a Decetic on appearance called Counterpunch. And... They basically shared the same body and transformed into a blue car. Well, Sideways is pretty much the same, but he has two different minicons to represent in his different factions. That could. And the two minicons combined to form the rider for his bike mode. That's true, that's true. And in any case, I enjoyed the kids, but also my favorite characters in there was, of course, um... I'll give you a clue. He's an old man, but a friend of trans, but a friend of Autobots. We use as a spy, the Megatron. Scavenger. Bingo! You got it right away. Yes. I kind of liked him because he reminded me of my teacher who was a bit of a mentor to me learning about classic and all that. I had a lot of mentors growing up. Why do you think In I... Oh, go ahead. It was mainly the Transformers themselves that got me interested. Same here. 
Same here indeed, honey. Their names, their appearances. The color, the theme, the battles, the fighting. It was mainly the characters. Not the fighting, it was the characters themselves. At one point, we even had Ryan Oaks in the show. However, he didn't give any voice, and I even... Yeah. Go ahead. It was a cameo appearance in the final episode where he was basically a recolor of his trans metal toy from the Beast Wars toy line. It turns out and he clean in his color scheme from his Armada toy, which is a reach on that same figure. Alright, we're back, folks. What you were saying, honey? I mean, what was I saying before the video cut out? Um, you were talking about your favorite characters from Transformers Armada. Oh, yes. Well, my favorites would have to be the original well, the Arbon, my favorites would have to be Optimus, of course, Red Alert, Hotshot, Blur, and Jetfire. With the Decepticons, Megatron, Starscream, Cyclonus, Demolish, and Tidal Wave. And uh, a, go ahead. Or Sideways, I consider him neutral, or light of Unicron. Basically, he's, he actually is Unicron, just in a different body. True, very masterful and evil. My favorite, Optimus Prime, and not Jetfire. Hotshot, yes. Red Alert, yes. Smokescreen, yes. Scavenger, yes. Um, mm -mm, one of these characters. Megatron, and one yes. Thing to mention, uh, honey, I'm not done. Sorry. Demolisher, uh, not Thrust, not Tidal Wave, not Cyclonus, Starscream, yes. Wheeljack, yes. And of course, sideways, of course, I love villains. And, well, and as for the rest, the three minicons that are with the children and the children themselves. Except not the last, but not the last new one. The last two kids weren't exactly uh, good characters. Mm -hmm. Fred and Billy. And here's something I realized with the three kids. If you take the first names of the three kids, Carlos, Alexis, Rad, what do you get? Uh, you can tell me. Car. Whoa. C A R. Car. Bravo, honey. And also, let's not forget, this show also received its own video game. That's true. We got to play Optimus, Red Alert, and Hotshot. And fight Megatron, Tidal Wave, Starscream, and Cyclonus. While traveling the world looking for mini cons. Also, my favorite part of the show was when Optimus Prime confronted Sideways within his body, learned the truth that Sideways was another of Unicron's creations, allowing his master to take over his body to speak through Sideways' attempt to make um, uh, Prime the new ve the new vessel for his master. What? Really? Oh god, that's weird. After disposing of the others to be absorbed by Unicron's body, when Red was able to awaken the Minicons, they managed to break free and deceive and deactivate Unicron in the process. In rage, Sideways attempt to kill his siblings for doing this. Siblings? Wait, are auto are the Autobots just siblings? Didn't know that. Only fatally wounded by Optimus Prime, using a Rickle and Blaster on him, and he says that if you did it in words and dies. Transformers Cybertron, he in Transformers Cybertron, he later revealed that he was originally from Planet X. But he had a new body. We'll talk about it a different time, though. Well, actually, in the comics associated with Transformers Cybertron, the black hole actually ended up warping reality. Oh. That makes sense. And as I did say, that there was a Rhinox. Rhinox was introduced to the Amai Toyland remodeled Beast War figure, along with the remote of Pterosaur, Aerosaur, and, of course, um, Cheetor. And Megatron, we named Predacon. Where, um, Rhinox was nobly <clears throat> the only one of the group who appeared in the anime series, he made a comment on the final episode. Was seen getting ready for attack jet after hearing Hot Rod order the rage and it's all to get him done. Yes, and his and his uh, mini con was Armorhead. Does not appear a lot. Armorhead. Yes, thank you. And Rhinox. Mm. Sorry. Rhinox also appeared in Dreamwave comics, series, which I just know, which I just said I have. And that's really it. Done talking. Your turn. Basically. 
cling with the toy line, they introduced retooled and recolored versions of Beast Wars transmetal toys of Rhinox, Cheetor, Air Razor, Megatron, which was named Predacon, and the transmetal Pterosaur. That's what I said, silly. <laughs> yes. In addition, as for Wheeljack, he was actually an Autobot, a friend of Hotshot, who so ended up becoming Ewok, to being saved by Megatron. Oh, yes. But still had some good in him. Yes. Hey, Case, next program to talk about is Ben 10 2005 TV series. This boy has an uh, alien watch that was created by a scientist who is friends of Grandpa Max, who is a plumber who um, defends aliens or keeps aliens away from human Earth, from the humans on Earth. Benton is an arrogant, sn arrogant, sloppy kid, but in the end, he has a good heart. And, it's, and his cousin, Gwen, who I like a lot because he's almost my cousin sometimes. <laughs> Go on, honey. So, yeah, it was basically the aliens Ben transformed into that got me into the franchise. e blast, Twilight, Mutt, Diamond Head, Accelerate, Grey Matter, Four Arms, Sting Fly, Rip Jaws, Upgrain, Ghost Freak, Cannonball, mm. Mop Vine, Ghost Ben Wolf, A Blitz Wolfer, Ben Mummy, later named Snarrow, and Ben Franklin, ben, if you know what I mean. Ben Victor, rare named Frankenstrike, yes. Upcha, Ditto, I Guy, and of course the biggest of the original. No aliens from the, first, from the original show, way big. Yep. The show was all around aliens. At the time when I was in, uh, in junior high, I was into aliens because, well, if you watch one of my videos, it'll tell you about an alien story. But yes, Ben is arrogant, but it reminded me of my cousin. And hmm. Gwen was one of my favorite characters later on. We found out that she could do magic. But later on in the Ben, in the other Ben 10 alien voice, we found out it's this alien power she got from her grandmother. But we'll, um, mm -hmm. we'll talk about that probably in a different series in the case. But yes, yes. We care, the characters are awesome. Grandpa Max reminds me a lot of my grandfather because my grandfather, as I said, was in the war. And yeah, he fought off training his kids to fight, to make sure, to training them how to fight, mm -hmm. and also handle aliens to make their day safe. And, well, his menu of eating herbs and weird alien foods are kind of bleh, grossing me out. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's basically one thing I don't like about Max. And the Blue Blaney, or the Plurs, they're basically an intergalactic police force like the Green Lantern. Maybe. From DC Comics. Oh, sorry, honey, go on. In any case, um, also, um, Kevin Levin was the opposite exactly like Ben, but Ben Tennyson has family, and Kevin, no, no family. He was a runaway. Yep. Because of his powers, but then there's a bigger story about that in a different in a different show. Anyway, in any case, the characters were all really good characters. There was just wow, and the show was just amazing. And of course, the meanest bad guy of them. Go on, honey. Look, Ben's arch enemy, obsessed to create an army of warriors, wielding the Omnitrix, the watch that allows Ben to change into whose alien forms. Correct the moon, no love, as always. Yes, that nasty of a creep was evil. Capital yes. E V I L. Very Later, nice. his obsession changed to wanting to destroy Ben while constantly making a monkey out of him. <laughs> In addition to Vilga, other memorable villains include the mad scientist Dr. Animo, the first mm. Earth based villain Ben Fox. Yep. Rojo, the biker girl, who temporarily became a cyborg at the merging of one Vilgax's robots. Charmcaster. So, yeah, Charmcaster, the niece of... Um, Hex. The niece of Hex. And of course the, the one... Big trio. And also... Has a breath and spit acid. Red Wig, who has tentacle like hair. And Bumskull, the muscle the trio. Uh, um, and now for the most biggest villain... Z Scar, or known as Ghost Freak. He's scared. Uh, he's scared. It's known as the Scare. I know, but I'm trying to say it, okay? But he, known as Ghost Freak. I was trying to say that, honey. You took my spot, honey. Sorry. <clears throat> as my boyfriend pointed out, and let me finish. 
He was the most notorious, evilest, scariest villain out of all the villains I hated in the show. He scared me out of my love of Hex. Because growing up, I dealt with the paranormal. I dealt with things like that. But Ghost Rick scared me out of my love of Skull. He scared me the first time I saw him in the clown episode. Oh my god, I hate clowns. And they scared me too. But seriously, Ghost Rick, yes, for the sake of I can't say his name right. Ghost Rick scared the living crack out of me. Go ahead, honey. Sorry about that, love. Uh, actually, the ghost, ghost freak was actually the essence yeah. of the scare, the high echo lord, lord of ghost freak's fate. Basically, the scare learned of the Omnitrix when one of Gorgax's probes ended up on his home planet. Using it, he ended up coming across Maya, the assistant of the one responsible for the Omnitrix's creation. Hmm? Possessed the Florana wild vines rates, uh, allowing the sample of his DNA to be taken as well. As the scary Kate Ghost would point out, an up to a neurite consciousness exists, even in a few strands of DNA. And he ended up becoming the main villain for the third season. That's true. Capital two, true, true, true. And of course, we have the Forever Knights. Uh, honey, they won't be mentioned until the latest episodes, plus they won't be mentioned until Alien Force, so honey, refrain from only yeah. talking about them a few things. Don't spoil everything until we talk about Ben Alien Force. Okay. Only a few things. Sorry, honey. But hey. Only a few, only, we only talk about the characters we see in the dream of episode for Ben, okay? Would that satisfy you? Well, let's not forget one was the founder of the negative ten, yes. and was and did take the place of previous for like Commander Enoch. Yes, because the main villain. That's true. Former plumber kicked out of the disgrace after being caught stealing technology go from the alien criminals personal gain who joined the forever night Emily became the leader and goal to achieve world domination after Lena Plummer's secret sub energy weapons and forever nights assembled negative 10 as my boyfriend once said and well tennis sends human enemies to steal and activities goals he was the main oddity of season four in any case the negative ten consisted of animal Tron Caster, the Circus with Trio, Rojo, and two characters who haven't been seen since. Clancy, the guy who, uh, who, had, who had the power to control bugs, living insects and arachnids, and the short Tetnet, as a Blumino, voiced by the same act, through the Nickelodeon characters Zen and Daggett of Angry Beavers. In any case, those are our thoughts on the um, 2000 TV series and. As I mentioned, uh, we forgot to mention, Jayco, who are your favorite characters from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX? Well, from Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, from the two shows. From Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! Or Santa Ten, Joey, Kaiba, Taya, and my Valentine. From GX, Jaden, Alexis, Cyrus, Chaz, Tyranno Hasselberry, the student who's part dino, dude. He acts in that book, his leg won the fossil excavation. And Jesse Anderson, the boy of the Crystal Beasts. Yep, Crystal Beasts indeed. Well, in any case, our next program we'll be talking about is Honorable Mentions because, well, we're almost running out of time here. And some of us need to get to bed and get some rest. So, our next on. Honor mentionables we will we will say and talk about are mm. let's see oh yes honor uh, mentioned Justice League um and Justice League Ultimate this show was awesome this unlimited time, actually mm. it's unlimited not ultimate well excuse me for misreading it uh, these, me. these were the I first think... honey let me say it sorry. <laughs> This show got me into the whole shebang of superheroes. Not just introducing Batman and Superman together, but Wonder Woman, Hawk Woman, Flash, Green Lantern. Well, I call her Hawk Woman. Okay? There's a difference. 
the on-screen debut of Martian Manhunter. Uh, and Martian Manhunter. They're all my favorite heroes. And then later on down the path, we get more heroes, more villains, more battles. And, of course, one of the most nastiest villains I hate in this show was Gorilla Grodd. He was evil. Just nasty. Oh, he scared me. He gave me the creeps when I was a kid. I mean, he proved that gorillas can be pretty dangerous. And Joker. Only one episode, though, which was a pain in the butt next. Two, actually. Two, yes, you're right. And we saw Batman creative, Batman's um, low wolf side. Superman's willingness to work with others. Wonder Woman strive to be, to help men. And, of course, Green Lantern, which is John, my favorite Green Lantern, because he's the only African-American Green Lantern that exists in the show. That's the reason why I like him. And, of course, Flash with red hair. We saw that one. Really West. Yes, West. I don't know. And Hawk Woman. Yes, I know I call her Hawk Woman, but hey, I like calling her Hawk Woman. In any case, we saw many of heroes and villains, and yet so many wrongs of the world. Next show on our mention is da -da -da -da, He's Day Phantom. Danny Phantom was a TV show that his parents, goofy and idiotic as they are, created a ghost portal that could open a portal. Sadly, though, it didn't work for them, but it turned him into a half-ghost and half-human. And he and his friend Sam, who is an um, ego-vegetarian, and um, their tech friend, um, I can't remember his name. Honey, can you? The dark skin. Yes. Hello. I can't remember his name either. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? <laughs> Get choice. You're gonna have to look it up. Oh, Tucker. His name's Tucker. Finally remember. The show was very good. Plus, it related to teenagers. He was kind of like Spider-Man, only with uh, ghost powers. He was called a Hapa. He had many enemies, especially his um, his mom's old old friend, Black Plasmus, who was really sicko. I mean, seriously. He, he was one, as once Danny Phantom says, he has one crazy major Fruit Loop. He wanted Danny as a son? That is so nutty. Seriously, though. I stop. I guess you could say he was Danny's mom's old plane. Oh, yeah. Very old fart, more like it. And, of course, Jack was uh, <laughs> lovable. I love the episode where he bonds with his daughter, Jasmine. Because, well, Father Donner. I, I love my dad. So yeah, the show was awesome. As for the last movie, I loved it. But I wish they would continue the show. It was amazing. If it did continue, I would have loved to watch more. Your thoughts, honey? Well, I didn't actually get into it pretty much. Oh. I only watched a few episodes, like the one where Danny had to deal with a time-traveling evil version of himself. Oh, yes. Dark Daniel. Mm. Nasty piece of work. He killed his human half just because he didn't want that human to love. Most that was too dark. Our next program is Kim Possible Moment Beep Me if you wanna reach me. Kim Possible was a cheerleader, spy, fighter, anything really. Anything is possible. And of course with her major sidekick, Ron Stoppable, but in the series turned out to be her boyfriend. And of course her naked role rat and a naked mole rat. Rufus! Rufus! The cute little pink thing. In any case, we yep. have millions of villains with Dr. Dragon, Shigo, Monkey Fist, and all the other shebangs. Honey? Basically, there was also the man Gotham. Or Duck Killer King. The Shape Shift. Or Chameleon. Which was revealed until the new season of Kim Possible. And DNA. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, great. I was the one who gained Lord Monkey. The power. The feet. Yeah, or the hands of Monkey Feet, if you want to point that way. Yeah. In any case, mm -hmm. the show is really a wonderful program. I love of Disney's classic cartoons. Disney had a really good chance with Kim Possible. Kim Possible was this amazing show and all that. It's just truly ethical and amazing. Kim Possible was like, she could do anything except bake, which later on she did become a baker, ironically. Yeah. And, um, what, oh, go ahead. Her dad was a rocket scientist, so her mom was a brain surgeon, and that was all in her. Her little brother was joined from being, well, troublemaking. Bodies. As Kim's 
in the movie So Not the Robot, this is what happens when a brain surgeon and a rocket scientist reproduce. Oh yeah, you take the words right out of my mouth. Skin this off later. <clears throat> Any case, our next program is What's New Scooby Doo? <laughs> Can I come in you? Now, this Scooby Doo series took a lot from the old and brought about new. But we got a lot of more designs, more villains, and more crazy episodes. What do you say, love? Basically, they were trying to a typical formula with the monster it always turned out to be someone in the Halloween costume. Yeah, but they had more technology and it far more yep. interest, if you know and what I mean. And Fred, of course, not uh, being the smart leader he was in the classic cartoons. That's true. And the series also took the thing around the world. Oh, yes. Around the world. It was amazing. But most of the episodes were very, well, how can I say, assemblage. Most of them were all classic, Scooby-Doo and the gang, enjoying the earth. But the only episode that really got me, well, cracking on the mind was when Velma was scared of a clown and then Shaggy was solving the case. Oh yes, I remember that. When Shaggy was entering the mini golf tournament. Where the robotic clown turned out to be the mayor trying to make sure his son wins the tournament. Which was really bad, and I was confused being Velma being afraid of clowns. I know because being afraid of clowns is normal. I have a fear of clowns. In any case, it was just wow. Plus, we were able to see uh, Scoop, we were able to see the game when they were kids, like from the Scooby Doo animated series when they were kids. Yeah. Pop name Scooby Doo reference. I own that one, and also we got a guest appearance by the Hex Girls in the in one episode. One oh. of the twin bed. I Yes, I know that one. Yes, we did. Sorry, I'm trying to scratch some glue off my skin. I still have some uh, some Gorilla Glue. Warn to you, if you use Gorilla Glue for art, never. Because Gorilla Glue could stuck your skin for months. Next show would be House of Mouth. Who's that cracking of the House of Mouth? We get all our favorite Disney villains and heroes. Cobb Snake, Shere Khan, Blue, Cinderella, Belle, Beast, Ariel, Dumbo! Just the name and of was Peter Poon Friends. Exactly. Basically, it was basically a nightclub run by Nikki and the gang. Characters from the 20th century Disney films and stuff to make an appearance. So don't it? Like characters from recent Disney films to make any appearances. Yes, the show was amazing. We got music scenes, fighting scenes, comedy and all that. And Pete trying to be the villain, always trying to stop it because, well, he rents the place to them. He owns it. Basically, the board. Yeah, basically, and board, yeah. And we get to see everyone all different. Like, um, Clara Claire Clow is the uh, one that makes rumors. Minnie's the one that is um, Mickey's right-hand man or right-hand mouse, I would say girlfriend. Donald tries to upgrade the game. Goofy has his fun, lovable self, but his son is in the game, too. Rockstar was also mentioned in the episode, which was really good. Even, yep. even Pepper Air was like, mentioned. Only yeah. for a while, though. I remember that for Roxanne. There was also a little scene with Goku making an appearance. But he made a whole Goofy fell into. And Mickey said, gosh, tell me! And Goku popped up and said, well... And the pretty big termite. The thing is, my favorite episode was when <laughs> the Lord of the Underwood was trying to fall in love, was trying to get Maleficent to uh, notice him. Which was pretty romantic. Uh, the Lord Hades is built for Maleficent. Oh, yes. Love conquers all, including evil. Maleficent to both Hades because of how bad he can be. How bad, how bad, how can he be? Couldn't help. I like him, yeah. Well, uh, the house of mouse? It's basically like... It's basically like if I spy. You know, trying to spy how many, how many cartoon characters. My favorite episodes were usually the Halloween ones. But my favorite one was oh. Bibbidi Bobbidi Stew! Because we got to see an ironic scene of one of my favorites, or our favorites, Car, hip, car Coil and Mowgli trying to hypnotize him. <coughs> we got a few scenes of them seeing each other, which is kind of fun. And Car and Sir Khan gets to have a few talking, especially with Mortimer Mouse, which reminds me, why did Mortimer Mouse was in the show? Why? 
I wonder. Who? Mortimer Mouse, the big fat rat who tried to get Minnie. Oh yes, I remember. He was in a few episodes, usually making cameos. In fact, that's what I loved about the House of Mouse. It was basically like playing I Spy, trying to find how many, you know, Disney characters you're familiar with. Indeed. You know. Even in one episode, we learned that Donald Duck can't fly. Which is very weird because he's a duck. Yeah. In fact, Keto from Atlanta has lost Empire made an appearance in that episode. So, yeah, basically, you know, characters from 20th century, early 2000s, making appearances within the crowd. But never see, uh, but never see, uh, but never Toy Story character. Well, actually, one time Donald Duck did appear as a few characters. He dressed him up for a Halloween costume. Actually, it was really because these were hand drawn, hand drawn cartoons. True, but at least they were at least they were shown. At least they were shown. And there you have it. Oh, this is made by Pixar. That's true. And there you have it. The show we've done it. The big list of two thousands. As for our next time, next time will be two thousand ten. So from beyond, from White Rose, I say goodbye to Jacob. See you next time. Alright, folks. Adios and good night to you, all blessed folks of America. E. Okay, my brony watchers, remember to subscribe to my channel. And remember, there's always more with me than meets the eye. Or, should I say, more than meets a white rose. Night, folks. E.